What's going on, tubers? White Mexican back in for another video. My deepest apologies. It's been probably several weeks now since I've launched a video, but here I am. I'm back, and this is another video for you guys. Today I'm going to be talking about a plethora of cards. Um, I got a few banned cards. I have a few cards that I think are going to be kind of hot interest in the collector's market potentially. And the majority theme of this video is going to be draw power cards in general. But let's just go ahead and get right into it. Enough of, enough of the fluff. Um, Ultimate Rare Soul of Fire coming out of Force of Breaker. This card is a little bit pricier right now. I mean, it makes sense. It's an old school Ultimate Rare. Um, this is not one of the draw power cards. It's just kind of a random card that I found while looking through draw power cards. And this card is pretty cool. It has some pretty cool artwork. Um, it's an old school ultimate rare, so that's always nice. Everyone always loves that. Um, if you just pause the video and read this effect really quick, I think this card is just super, super awesome. Um, it's an awesome burn card. Of course, you know, fire support is always coming in and out, and I just think this has a very unique effect where it can banish one. It can dig and banish any monster, any pyro monster from your deck, and then it just does a huge burn, especially if you push out. A really big beat stick so it's a really cool card in its own in its own rate in general i think it's pretty unique and it's pretty awesome so uh taking a look here of course you want to look at the first edition ones and it looks like the first first edition is about um five dollars so it's about five dollars for these um for the first editions and it slowly goes up after that um but yeah i think there's only two pages left um there's other versions of this of course but i would definitely recommend going all out and going for the ultimate rare. Moving on to the next card here, we have uh, Into the Void ultimate rare. So there's a couple different reprints that came out for this. I think it's two ultra rare reprints, or two ultra rare prints, and then this, the ultimate rare. So the ultimate rare is the best always, of course. Um, it's kind of gone up as of late. There was a time when first edition ultimate rares were sitting about 10 bones. And they're sitting about almost 20 right now. So the cheapest one here for first edition is actually um, a 21, 22 range. So this is definitely a card you don't want to get right now. But this card fell off the radar, and this is still a very good card. If you're playing a deck that wants to pitch to the grave, um, such as Dark World is an awesome prime example of this card, maybe Burning Abyss. Um, there's just endless possibilities with this card, and uh, if you're playing a deck that is like super tube, super turbo and draws a lot of cards really very quickly, um, this is a fantastic choice. Plus, it has awesome artwork, and it's another old school ultimate rare, so that's always an option. Moving on, so bear with me. This card, you know, if you read it in plain text, it is like a neg two. It's not a good card by any means. Um, really killer artwork. I really, really love the artwork on this. There's a couple different rarities. Of course, this is the ultimate rare, so this is the, the highest rarity. Um, again, another old school ultimate rare coming out of Lost in Millennium. Um, and this card is like ridiculously expensive. It's like showing at $100. It's really not $100 right now, is it? Um, okay, th this card may have just had a, buy a buyout because this card was not $100 when I was doing my research with these these tabs hold on let me just see something really quick my deepest apologies this might have been a bio it's not okay yeah there's no way in this card okay so sorry about that um so yeah card of sanctity so the only reason i mentioned this card besides it being an old school ultimate rare which has really awesome artwork uh, once again um is the fact that if you if there comes a time that there is a deck where you want to remove cards you want to banish cards and you get plus effects for removing cards. This card will become a powerhouse card. If you think about it, if you're playing a deck that's revolved around removing your cards from play, and then you pop off effects by them getting removed from play, um, this is basically just a free pot of greed at that point. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the prices. It's about the cheapest for the first edition is about 11 bones, and it quickly moves into 14. And then moves on from there. There's very, very small quantities of this in the market, and then it tops off at about $110 at the very bottom. So that is an option. Again, this card has awesome artwork. It's an old school ultimate rare, and it's kind of just a preemptive card. Um, 
when there tom comes a tom when there comes a time and there will come a time eventually when you get plus effects from banishing cards, um, this is going to be a really awesome card. So that's kind of a future card to keep on the radar. The next card is going to be the beginning of the end. So this saw a lot of hype. Uh, I don't remember. It was like several months ago, or maybe last year. There was a couple uh, core meta decks running this card. Another old school ultimate rare from Phantom Darkness into this set. A lot of powerhouse cards came out from this core set here. Um, of course, there's other versions. This is the ultimate rare version, so we're just going to go ahead and look at the best version, which is this one being the ultimate rare. Um, a little bit pricey right now. Um, we're looking at um, this is all the unlimiteds, as you guys can see. I want to take a look at the first editions because you always want to go first edition. That's always going to carry the most value for your investment. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any first editions on the first two pages. There's about five plus pages of this card, ultimate rare version, and it's about 15 bones. So about 15 bones for first edition, ultimate rare, the beginning of the end. Um, it's kind of slow because you do need to have a lot of fodder in your graveyard, but again, there's a lot of dark support, dark uh, centric decks, turbo dark decks, that you can really push this out relatively easily depending on how quick your deck is. And um, it's pretty incredible that it allows you um, to draw three cards. And again, um, it's kind of hard to see in the ultimate rare version. You can't really see the artwork that well. Not really too impressive, but it is an ultimate rare, which is always stunning in itself. Um, moving on to the secret rares, we have Trial and Tribulation. Um, there is, I think, maybe one or two content creator, creators that have covered this card in past videos and that I kind of decided to pick up on. And this card's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of diverse, and if you're playing decks where you tribute a lot, um, this might be useful. I just think this is kind of a G-Wiz card. Um, it's a really cool secret rarity. Um, I don't know, Galactic Overlord has had beautiful secret rares. Um, I'm a really big fan of this set in general. The, the secret rare form of this process was just fantastic in my opinion on this set um okay artwork uh it's pretty cool artwork i don't i don't really know what, what's going on it's kind of an obscure um image there well let's take a look at the first editions um the reason why i wanted to talk about this is because it is relatively cheap right now it's about three bones two dollars plus for the first editions um these are all one of unfortunately um but there is more than five pages available so um in my opinion, I would try to pick this up around the $2 range. So if you can trade or bargain or whatever it may be, I would probably go for more of the $2 range. But this um, has decreased over time. It was a little bit more expensive. Now that's in around the $3 range, I just wanted to showcase it really quick. Um, also, another card that's really cool that kind of is based around tribute stuff, I don't know if it's in here, is this card, Advanced Zone. You want to go for the uh, original print secret rares. I don't remember which set, but... Guys, you may want to take a look at this advanced on. I have a few copies myself, first edition secret rare, which is pretty cool. Um, and it goes off of tributing uh, mechanics. Next card is going to be Pot of Deconomy. Um, I think this is a really underrated card. Um, there's a lot of decks, of course, natural synergy that have a lot of the same type monsters and stuff. But there's also some pretty awesome rainbow decks that you can make and combining different ad, uh, archetypes and just Mining decks in different generals, that's kind of a popular thing. Even in the meta days, people kind of combine decks, different core decks here here and there. Um, and it's pretty good draw power for what it is, and it's still uh, a core set secret rare. There was a Megaton reprint, but of course this is going to be the original print, which is going to be awesome. You're always going to want to go for this first edition. And it's, it's relatively cheap right now. It's about $3 for the first edition original prints. And these are all one of, and there's about four pages left. So I think this is just kind of a forgotten of pot card, but I still think this is a powerhouse card. Um, of course, there's things like Crow, and there's a lot of things that can easily um, disrupt this. Um, I was referring to DD Crow, the hand trap. Um, but it's still a beautiful secret rare. Um, I just, you know, I have, <laughs> I'm super biased to secret rares, but I just kind of wanted to put that out there. Um, Pot of Acquisitiveness. This is uh, interesting enough. There's only still been one solo print of this, the Super Rare from Invasion of Vengeance. Uh, I'm a big anti-meta player, um, 
it. I'm not a fan in general, and I, I love making decks with like Vanish of the Radiance, Macrocosmo, stuff for Vanishes a lot, and kind of just takes away the opportunities of the graveyard away from you and your opponent. Um, and this card's pretty awesome for that. Um, I like how it's a quick play, and I like how it's a plus one, um, depending on you play it, and then you can recycle um, three removed monsters, and it can be any monsters. It can be your opponent's monsters, and your monsters. More than likely, you're going to do your monsters because you want to get the plus. Um, kind of silly artwork, but still an awesome pot card in general. And it is a solo print still, which is pretty surprising because Invasion Vengeance was several years ago now. Guarded Treasure. So I believe that I mentioned this on maybe two or one of my videos so far. I love this card. I've invested in a few copies myself. I think I have four or three copies now. Uh, original print, um, first edition, of course. This is another solo print, to my understanding, unless this is an error on TCG, I'm not sure. But to my understanding, this is a solo print secret rare from Dragons of Legend. Um, really awesome artwork. I really do enjoy the artwork a lot. All the sparkle shines. Um, this chick with the little mystic hands and someone in some kind of depressive state and desperation and craziness. Um, this is just an awesome card. Again, this is kind of going back to that um, card sanctity thing where if you were to remove your cards and get plus effects off cards being removed from play. This is kind of the same thing except more for the graveyard. So when you have cards that plus from being pitched to the graveyard, um, or just being in the graveyard in general, such as, you know, Light Squadron, Burning Abyss, um, Dark World, Dark World, of course, that, you know, that's that's cost uh, effect. The, the cost cards don't really work for popping off the Dark World effects. But anyway, what I'm thinking about with this card so if you're playing a deck where you want to pitch cards, you want to get cards on your hand, say with like Affernities or something, where you know pitching cards is kind of like what your deck does, um, is it just awesome draw power. It's a continuous magic card, so you keep on using it um, every turn to draw two instead of one. Um, it can be popped off quickly, of course, because it's vulnerable on the field. Um, but in general, I'm just saying that this card's pretty cheap right now too. It's only about uh, about two dollars for the first editions and there's several on the market here five pages So I just think this is something to consider. I think for two dollars this card is a fantastic investment just to hold It's not good right now, but again when decks come out that want to have um, a Lot of discarding outlets and things in the grave. I think that this is going to be a fantastic choice Magical spring so this card is kind of um my, I, I haven't personally seen a lot of play with this card. I know some people cite it. There was times when it was pretty big in the meta. Um, I wasn't really active during the times. Um, I've been overseas the last five plus years of my life, so it's been really hard for me to uh, get to any kind of tournaments, not even a locals or any kind of big events myself personally in the last couple of years because of my career. But um, there was some... Some pretty popular trending in this card, and there were some times when its prices kind of went up when it was seeing some side deck play. Um, really awesome draw power card. Um, it's a quick effect, uh, quick play, so that's always awesome diversity. You always, you know, I, quick quick play magic cards are always my favorite. They give you just that diversity to set them or play them from your hand on your turn or whatever it may be. So the diversity is awesome. It is a secret rare. There was a reprint. Which way, I believe this is only the second print. The other print was a Megaton print. You're always going to want to go for the original prints, of course. So coming out of Duelist Alliance. And let's take a peek at this really quick. There's a first edition here for about two bones. And there's another one for about four-ish, depending on how you want to stock it up. So uh, not too bad. Only two pages left. So there's really not a lot of these left for the original prints. Um, and this is just a phenomenal card, um, and I think it's always going to kind of be a card that kind of comes in and out of the meta for draw power. Veil of Darkness is going to be the next card. I didn't know this originally came as a secret rare out of Gladiator's Assault, but I learned that today. Pretty cool, um, pretty cool thing to learn. This is I, I love this card. Again, this is just more dark support, more dark support. Um, really cool artwork. I really do enjoy the artwork a lot in this card. Surprisingly enough, the Gold Series 2009 look fantastic. These are personally the copies I have. I think I have about four or five of these, the Gold Series 2009. This was back when gold was like actually good. Like the Gold Series, I think 2008, 2009, and the Haunted Mine. Those were like the only series that had good ghost 
card, gold cards. After that, they were just kind of like really crap. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the secret rare first, with the secret rare being the highest rarity. Let's see if we can populate some first editions and kind of get a rough estimate of how much it's going to cost us for a first edition Veil of Darkness. <clears throat> Um, was there really only four listings in this card? Let's see. So, yes, yeah, so it looks like there's only four listings left of this. Of course, only looking for Near Mint and Lightly Quaid. And the first cheap first edition is about five ish dollars. So, this card is quickly depleting, as you can see, only four left for the original print, Secret Rare. Um, I, I don't know, like, this is just, again, this is just more dark support, draw power, and it's got really cool artwork. Any kind of artwork that has an actual Yu-Gi-Oh card in it, I think that's just really cool. I really have a thing for artwork that has actual, like, Yu-Gi-Oh cards on a Yu-Gi-Oh card. It's like a double mirror. Um, again, Veil of Darkness from Gold Series 2009 is not a bad alternative. I really do. It looks really nice. I know a lot of people trash gold stuff. I do too. I hate gold stuff, except for 2008-2009 and the Haunted Mine. Um, like stuff like this, like the premium stuff is just utter garbage juice. But um, let's see, what, what was the other ones here? And then the Super Rare. Uh, anyway, so uh, plenty of, of different reprints, but the Secret Rare and the Gold Series 2009 are going to be the ones that you're going to want to go for if you want to get that card. Moving on to Book of Eclipse. Now, um, reading this card just in general, it really sucks. It's not um, a big deal. Uh, it's kind of like a big nag, technically, because your opponent drives a lot of cards. But the only reason why I mentioned this card, um, one, because it's the Astro Pack 8 Super Rare, which is the highest rarity of this card to date in the TCG. Also, um, I mentioned this card more specifically for like those troll decks where you deck out your opponent, the deck out, and they just draw all their cards, and then they can't draw cards, and they lose instantly. This is why I'm mentioning this card. Um, that card kind of comes in and out of not really maybe like hardcore meta competitive play, but it's it's a really fun deck to play. Like I'm sorry, I'm gonna be that guy. I think it's really fun to play like these really trolly burn decks um, and uh, deck out like you know like needle worm decks and all that stuff. Um, um, so yeah, it's a quick play and it's good for that deck pretty much exclusively. No one really plays it outside of like the troll deck out deck but um it's a cool card and it's got like the egyptian styled stuff and it's the highest rarity of this card so uh really quick for price trendings again you can see it you can all see like neo worm and like all like the troll troll deck out stuff cards here um it's gonna be about three dollars three dollars plus four dollars and there's about five plus pages so plenty on the market it's still kind of expensive though for just being a super rare um, I don't know, it, it's kind of expensive actually, but this card is awesome still, like if you want to build that deck, I think it's a fun deck to play, and you're definitely going to need that card for uh, building this deck. So really quickly, I just wanted to mention some um, GB support, so everyone knows in Chaos Impact, there is new GB support coming out, and it's supposed to be really good. Um, some contact creators have even kind of put out like the, all the new stuff and what they do in it. I'm really impressed. I'm really excited. So um, GBs were a really big deal when I got back into the game after high school, when I kind of restarted my Yu-Gi-Oh! history. And GBs, I, I remember always um, playing against them and like the whole like contact stuff and the fusions and I just it was it was really great it was a good time I really at the time was kind of frustrating because I was still getting back and getting used to like synchros and xyz's were like on the dawn uh, on the horizon they were coming out and the game was just so radically different from the dm era when I played as a kid so I was still kind of getting used to like you know even like the ban list and all that crazy stuff um but again this is uh, just a rare coming out of the original Senate Gladiator's Assault. I don't know. I'm sure this is probably going to get a reprint. There's a couple different versions in general. I think just two other commons, if I'm not mistaken. It's pretty cheap right now. But I just kind of wanted to put this on your guys' radar because the new um, the new GB stuff is coming out. I don't know if they're going to use this or not. Like This is some really, really old school stuff. Same thing with this. Um, some more draw power for them. Like, 
unfortunately, I don't think it's not. I don't know why it's not displaying the card effect here. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, really cool story though. So I am actually currently stationed in northern Japan, and um, I there's this card shop that I go to, and this old Japanese man who gives me free promotional posters when I go. You know, I go. We have this kind of deal where I go and I buy some some product from his store, and he gives me the you know the upcoming core set or extra set. Um, uh, posters and it's really awesome. I actually, I think it was yesterday, um, I was in Hachinohe and I went to a shop and I picked up a Chaos Impact poster and I was pretty excited because that was the poster I wanted. I'm just super excited for this set in general. I can't wait until we get it here in the TCG so we can be uh, playing with all the new Gladiator support cards. Chaos Green is going to be the next card here. So again, um, this is a total crap card when you think of it in plain text, but I think if there comes a deck support or revolved around having no cards in the graveyard and again wanting to banish cards, um, I think there's going to be cards that come out where you, if you already even have cards in your graveyard already, um, you'll have maybe monster effects or effects where you can just go ahead and almost like soul release and banish those cards, remove those cards from your graveyard to have a completely empty graveyard and basically turn this card into a free product read. Um, there's a couple versions of this, all common if I'm not mistaken. I would personally recommend going for the Invasion Chaos original print first editions, which there's actually quite a few. Um, well, just uh, really quickly, I just want to. I'm just curious. I, I thought there was some first editions on the first page, but it doesn't look like there is. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time digging through that, so you're going to want to switch your settings to. Um, three or more. I'll just do it right now. I don't want to be lazy. I mean, I, I'm showcasing this card, so I have to I have to go all the way. I have to go all in. Show you guys some first editions. So bear with me here. So there's one here from Dolly's. He's got two play sets for 28. Um, and then right here. So Core TCG. So I love Core TCG. They never mess up an order um, like ever. I've never... I've bought a ton of stuff from them. They're just really killer sellers. They got 10 here um, for a quarter dollar. So that's just an idea. Cool artwork too. Again, of course, bias. They have Yu-Gi-Oh cards on Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Gotta love it. Uh, Vylon Matter. This isn't really so much a draw card. I mean, it kind of is because you draw one, but it's cool how it gives you the option to either draw one or pop, a, pop an opponent's card. But the, that's not even the coolest part. The coolest part of that is that you can recycle three of your equipped magic cards, which I think is awesome. Um, that's a kind of unique recycle factor that I haven't really seen in this game outside of this card. And um, its diversity to destroy or draw I think is really cool. Kind of odd artwork. Really sad didn't come out in dual terminal. A lot of the Vylon stuff came out in dual terminal to boost its rarity. Unfortunately, I don't believe this card came out um, in dual terminal. I'm pretty sure it's a solo print common, and for some reason, saying that's out of stock, and it's definitely not out of stock. There's plenty of these on the market. So right here, uh, game time CC. There's you know for a dime they have 24, so there's more than enough on the market here, as you guys can see. So let's just um, thought. Moving on to the next card, the Big Cattle Drive. So what I like about this card, it's kind of restricted because there isn't a whole lot of Beast, beast Warrior um, decks running around, even still to this date. That's always been kind of a type of monster that's kind of gotten the shaft from Konami, uh, from Konami. And there's just not a lot of stuff that you can really play with that. But what's interesting how it says and or, and it also has Wing Beast type. So you can think of harpies, you can think of black wings. Um, those are probably some of the most infamous um, decks. And there's also Raid Raptor as well. Um, there's, these are all card, you know, big decks, uh, pretty pretty popular decks that have these uh, monster types that could uh, pull something off like this. So this is just another, unfortunately, it's a solo print common. It's cool, it's a solo print. Um, I think it would look really cool. It's like a secret rare. I think this would look so beautiful. The artwork is pretty awesome. I really do like the silliness of the artwork here as well. Uh, Soul Print Common coming out of Cosmo Blazer. 
course you want to go for the first editions. Um, here is 7 for 12 and there's about 88 prices, um, more than 5 pages. So plenty from plenty of the market to choose from, but I just wanted to pass that your guys' way. Moving on to the next card here, I apologize. Uh, I'm actually on shift right now. It's uh, pretty awesome that I get to uh, make this video. This is a special video because I'm shooting it from uh, the basement of the hospital here. But moving on to Cup of Ace. Uh, Cup of Ace is, and I thought there was an ultimate version of it. I could have sworn there was an ultimate version of this. Maybe I'm getting it confused with the Chalice cards, the Forbidden Chalice cards. Um, but I, I really thought there was. Uh, at least more than just a solo print of this card. I had no idea, but apparently TCG players saying this is a solo print card from Land of Destruction. Um, again, the only reason why I'm showcasing this card is because for that troll deck where you um, out deck your opponent, and it's either you draw two or they draw two. Either either way, you're gonna plus. This is it benefits your deck and it benefits your deck's cause. Um, and that yeah, that's pretty much it. And this really is a solo print. I'd be really, really surprised. Apparently it is. Uh, there's 22 here for about a half dollar. Of course, you're always going to want to go for the first editions on that. Hand Destruction. I love this card in Zombies, so I'm an avid zombie fan. I really like to mess around with zombies, especially after the uh, zombie horror structure that came out. Uh, was that last year, or was it in the beginning of this year. I can't remember, but really awesome structure deck. And um, I've loved zombies pretty much ever since that structure deck came out. So, I mean, you can call me uh, not like a true original zombie player by, by any means, but I really do enjoy the deck now, and I like messing around with it since the structure deck came out. And I really like this card in, in zombies in general. Of course, it's really good in a lot of other decks. Um, again, it's awesome because it's a quick play. So it's got diversity in that. Again, of course, it has Yu-Gi-Oh cards on Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You guys know me. I love that. I'm all about that. So that's plus for the artwork. And it has this old school, like, Suzuki Samurai looking dude. Um, it's just a simple two for two. Um, but again, when you are running a deck where you can plus from cards being in your graveyard, um, it can be more than a, a, a plus uh, or two, uh, than a two for two. So pretty cool. Unfortunately, I, this card is, is so old, and we still have yet to have a hollow version. Unfortunately, it's sad to say that this rare from Duel's Pack 7 is the highest rarity of this card. I'm sorry, I don't think I went over the prices on this really quick. So let's take a gander here at the prices. It's about a dollar. So, I mean, it's pretty much a dollar um, all across the board. And most of these are one-ofs, unfortunately, but... Uh, there's four pages, so you guys will have plenty to choose from if you do. I'm really mixed on this. I mean, I have a play set of rares just because, I again, I like splashing them in my zombies and just kind of messing around with them. But um, I would really like to see at least a super secret eventually. Extra net. Okay, so um, I'm really surprised. I don't know why, you know, a lot of anti-meta players or a lot of anti-meta channels or whatever don't talk about this card anymore. There was for a time. Um, I know personally, I uh, there is a YouTuber slash content creator that I follow almost exclusively who had mentioned this. And I really didn't know about this card. Secrets of Attorney was kind of a weird stage in my life. I was buying cards. I didn't personally buy into this set um, specifically, but this card is just fantastic. Again, the anti-meta player in me is coming out with this card. It's really sad that this is, uh, you know, only a common. It is a solo print, so that's pretty cool. This card would be so beautiful in Secret Rare. I think this card is powerful as hell, though. This card really deserves a Secret Rare reprint. It's a really awesome side card. Um, of course, obviously, you're going to want to play some kind of anti-meta based deck or whatever it may be. I don't know, maybe like monarchs or something because you don't use an extra deck in that for the most part but whatever it may be this is a fantastic card and konami can we please get a secret rare reprint or at least a hollow reprint of this like this card has been out forever and it's really sad that it is only a measly common and um anyway but going on um is this gonna work for me let's check the prices 
Um, again, only go for the first editions, and they're going to be like less than a quarter, and there is five pages. So plenty to choose from, but just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. Supply Squad. Remember this card? Okay, so this card's been out forever. There's been three prints, all common. This is another one of those cards. I think this is a fantastic card. It's really slow, but it has awesome artwork. It has, you know, you know, um, Goblin Force, Goblin Attack Force looking kind of artwork style stuff on it, which is pretty cool. Um, but we, we've had three prints in this card, and it's still not even a super rare. Like, come on, Konami, give us at least a super rare of this card. This card is an awesome card really quick it doesn't really matter what you click on they're all commons they're all relatively around the same price um just wanted to go to show you the effect really quick you guys can pause the video and read this effect i think it's pretty awesome it's pretty slow um it's for like a slow grind like a really really like slow meta card um but really cool artwork and um and yeah that's pretty much it Come and give us a super rare of this card already Moving on to Heart of the Underdog, so there's a couple different copies of this. This is the original print common from Invasion of Chaos, one of my all-time favorite old-school Generation 1 DM era, era Yu-Gi-Oh! sets of all time here in the TCG. Um, surprisingly enough, this card is actually pretty expensive for the first editions. Uh, if you look at the first first edition, it's like three bones plus shipping, which is pretty crazy. This is obviously a terrible buy right now. I definitely would not be spending this kind of money for a common, even though it was in it, even though it is in a, a generation one original um, awesome uh, card. Um, but I don't know. It, and I was kind of confused. I've seen people play this online where it's like a loop where if like you have just like a deck of like a whole bunch of vanilla cards, you keep on drawing more than one. I'm not really sure what, how the ruling if that's really how this card works or not. Um, so if you guys know, put it in the comments below because I'm not sure. I'm I'm very very bad at the whole rule shark thing. I'm not by any means a professional player. I just really love Yu-Gi-Oh and I like making these videos for you guys. So um, let me know if you guys know because I'm not really sure how how like the mechanics behind and how the ruling works on that. Okay, so this card, um, this deck in general, the the meta piece, I've always really liked this deck. There was a time when I kind of wanted to buy this deck. It's a pretty cheap deck. There's really not a lot of powerhouse cards that are going to run you a lot of money. This is actually, surprisingly enough, one of the most expensive cards for the whole deck core right now. Currently, um, it is a solo print, ultra rare, coming out of Circuit Break, so not that too not, not too long ago. Um, and let's take a look at the first editions. Of course, this is only going to work in a Meta Beast deck. This is a deck-specific card, but it gives you pretty awesome draw power. Um, and it's just an awesome card in general in the deck. And this is just, I wanted to showcase this because I really do like Meta Beast a lot. And, you know, for the longest time I've wanted to make to make them. The problem I'm having is a lot of the cards, especially the monsters, are just the deck in general, are just so low rarity that I'm afraid of going and picking it up because I know eventually it's going to get reprinted and it has to be reprinted in a higher rarity because most of the cards are like commons and rares and like super rare and it's just not really worth it. Um, it's a cool deck. I really do enjoy the deck a lot, but I'm personally waiting for higher rarities to come out. I don't know why my computer is not working. Um, is this going to work? So anyway, first editions are about four dollars plus. Um, so yeah, they're about four dollars plus shipping and stuff, depending on how you break it down. Only one page of this, by the way, so that's really surprising. I didn't know that there's only one page of this. Um, but this is pretty much their best card, so it kind of makes sense that people would go for this card. Uh, again, uh, I really do love Metaphys. I just wish that they would get higher rarity reprints. Fallen Paradise, coming out of Duel Saga exclusively as a solo print. Everyone knows Duel Saga is an awesome set. Uh, I'm pretty safe to say that majority of the fan base likes the ultra rare um, hollow coin, specifically from Duel Saga. We haven't gotten any set that's had this kind of print before, so pretty unique in its own standing. Um, this card is super awesome. If you want to just build a casual deck, that is based off these cards. I think this is a really awesome field spell. Artwork is really cool too. I really do enjoy how it's like the tree of sin. Like it's got the apple and it just, I don't know, it just looks really sinister. I like it a lot. 
And it's Duel Saga, and anything from Duel Saga is pretty cool in its own right, because we haven't gotten anything else here in the TCG with that ultra rare foiling. Um, looking at it really quick, it's about a half dollar. Uh, definitely playing the market with this guy with 65 for a half dollar. So, you know, there's plenty to choose from. Three pages left. And uh, again, just uh, an all around great card if you wanted to build a deck specifically around those cards. Rose and Rose. So, this just came out in Legendary Duelist Sisters of Rose not too long ago. It's really expensive right now because, again, this, this set just came out. And it's only it's a solo print. There isn't any. Unfortunately, it came out ultra rare, which really is not. I don't know. I really, I really kind of have problems with some, some, some ultra rare. Ultra rare is just it's not my favorite. There is the majority of cards I prefer them even be super rare or ultra rare, depending on the circumstance. Really amazing artwork. It's got black rose dragon here on like this vine of thorns, and it's like purple lightning. It is fantastic. This gets like a hundred. 13% on artwork wise whoever made this is just awesome especially with the purple lightning and just everything is just so great about this card um it's got really diverse effect um of course this is plant support like as with mo the most of the cards in this set um so if we get a secret rare reprint or maybe you know i'm hoping a secret rare reprint secret rare is my favorite rarity so um one of my favorite rarities i should say i kind of love everything but um Definitely would not pay the price uh, price tag of this card right now, but eventually when it gets reprinted, um, I think this card is really awesome for plant supports. Um, I've always kind of, ever since Plant Secro back in like 2011, 2012 era, um, I've just, I've always been fascinated with plants, and I think plants have some really awesome hidden talent and support, and I think they're always going to kind of be able to fight back. Um, throughout the ages, so uh, I'll come back to this card when it gets cheaper, as well as Fragrant Storm. So I have to mention Fragrant Storm again. I'm kind of repeating myself on this. There's several videos that I've mentioned this. Is again just um, some more plant support stuff. Kind of silly artwork, a little like storm, whatever you want to call it. But really diverse card, awesome card. I really like it a lot. And um, this is the highest rarity. Um, that we have right now as an ultra rare and it's about two dollars right now um yeah it's about two dollars for the first editions you can only go for the first editions on this card and it's about two dollars and there is plenty to choose from five pages so that's all i'm gonna say about that so that was it for the majority of the cards i wanted to cover now really quickly i want to go over some fan cards i have three forbidden or four forbidden cards that i wanted to go over mirage of nightmare i have covered this before so i'm not going to go too far into it um there is two choices that i wanted to look at the legendary collection three yugi's world secret rares and the original print super rares from veronic guardian I'm always tossed up about which one I want more because I have both personally, the Super and the Secrets, and they both look super awesome. The Super Rares because it's from the classic Generation 1 Frontier Guardian core set, and it has the Magic Stamp, um, which is really great, so you're going to want to go for the first editions. So let's just take a peek really quick at what first editions are looking like for the original print Super Rares, which have tons of nostalgia value, um, really awesome artwork. This card, of course, is forbidden. It's ridiculously powerful. When this gets unbanned, again, I'm an avid believer that everything gets unbanned eventually. I don't know if it's going to get eradicated or not. Um, I It's just such a powerful card. Um, I don't really see it coming off the ban list any other way. But we, got, we have a first edition here for about $2, so that's pretty awesome. There's four pages, so you guys can poke around with that if you want. I'm going to go ahead and go back take a look at the secret rare reprint from legendary collection three a phenomenal set i talk about this set all the time i think um i even made a video specifically just about this set um and i think it was legendary collection four as well some some of my all-time favorite reprint sets of all time if not my favorite reprint sets of all time just some fantastic high rarity um uh, staple cards and just awesome all-around general cards um cards in general um so we have the first first edition here for about 250 it looks like um and then it moves into about 
three-ish dollars. There's three pages left. Again, unless you guys decide if you want to go for the original print, um, Generation 1 with the magic stamp. This one has the spell stamp, but it's a secret rare. Really beautiful secret rare foiling. Super rare, too. Um, but, you know, you'll have to decide for yourself on that, which is going to be more valuable to you. I personally have both because I think they're both fantastic. That grass looks greener. This is taking forever to load for some reason. This is pretty expensive right now. I thought this got reprinted in the, the 2017 Megatons, um, but this is a solo print. I was fooled. This is a solo print coming out of Rage and Tempest, and it's sitting about 550 right now. Well, not even. It's a little bit more than that because that's print unlimited. Fantastic artwork. I love the artwork so much on this. Um, artwork is fantastic. Beautiful secret rare foiling. Um, everyone knows this is an infamously powerful powerhouse card. Uh, currently forbidden, of course. I definitely think it's going to come back eventually. Awesome because this is a solo print, but it's also probably why it's holding such an expensive price point. Because for us in the TCG, it is a solo print. So it's about $7.00. Almost seven dollars, six and a half for the first editions here, and there's more than five pages available. So again, I'm just showing this not because to buy it now. It's definitely way too expensive to buy right now. Um, if you can get this card for like twos, threes, I know that's really optimistic thinking, seeing how it's seven right now. Um, but it's still it's still forbidden, so you never know if you can trade for it or get it from other sites for around the three dollar range for first edition specifically. You guys want to go for first edition always. Uh, that is, that's a pretty solid deal. Pot of Avarice is going to be the next card. So this card is ridiculously expensive right now on all fronts, except for the Secret Rare. And the Secret Rare from, I want to say, Legendary Collections 3, Yuki's World, if I'm not mistaken. So you got the Ultimate Rare, you got the Ultra Rare. This is, like, ridiculous, like, how expensive the Ultra Rare is. Like, forget this. Like, Dark Revelations, like, I'm, I'm not about that. I'm all about, you know, Original Print Ultimate Rares from elemental energy like that that is like justifies okay like i understand like how like why that is so expensive but let's take a look here at the legendary collection for joey's world secret rare so this is still a secret rare this is still a fantastic alternative rarity i personally have one of these myself first edition and i think i bought it for five dollars if i'm not mistaken at the time and i thought that was a good deal and now it's even cheaper if we're looking at this um, there's two here for, you know, about $3, and this one maybe a little bit over $3. So this is a fantastic card. I don't think this card is going to stay around the $3, $4 range forever. Again, I bought mine for five bones, and I was thinking that I was getting a steal, and now these are about $3, $4. Um, let's take a look at the availability. There's about five pages left. Um, so I think for 2 to $3, I think this is a fantastic card to get. Currently, it is forbidden, of course. This card is just a powerhouse card. Eventually, it's going to come unbanned, and I think for the price of, you know, three bones for a secret rare, that is an awesome rarity for an awesome price. I really apologize about my internet. I, apparently, the, the Air Force buys made China Wi-Fi in Japan, or I don't really know how that works out, but it's really slow and crappy right now. Super Rejuvenation is going to be the next card, so we want to talk about the Legendary Collection for Joey's World Super Rares, which are sitting about two bones, around two bones or so, you can see here. Um, plenty of market, 39 prices, but then there's also the original print, Legacy of Darkness, which are ancient as hell, and super cool because they have the magic stamp, and they are DM Error Generation 1 Yu-Gi-Oh!, and comes with all their great nostalgia as well. So this is a powerhouse card for dragons. Dragons have always been a Konami favorite, um, everything favorite. There's just so much support for dragons. This card is just completely blowout. It's an amazing card. Um, who knows when this card comes off the ban list. Um, kind of silly artwork, but uh, really an awesome card. And Let's take a look here at a couple of first editions. We have a first edition here, right here. So, okay, well, that's actually only a one of, unfortunately. So you guys are going to want to look at the three ofs, of course, because this isn't really uh, an expensive enough card to just get one ofs. 
Um, but only four pages left. Of course, only get the first editions. Please do not, do not, do not get unlimited. They're not going to be worth anything. The first editions are always going to be the ones that you want to get for these old school cards. And um, the super rare too. The super rares are about two bones, so I'm pretty tied up. Um, personally, I'd be leaning towards, honestly, even though I really do like the original prints, um, the super rares do look really nice. And um, if you don't have a LOD first edition, the super rares are going to be the ones um, that's going to overshadow, overshadow on the value. So um, that's all I'm going to talk about for forbidden cards. The last set of cards I want to talk about is some artwork cards. So this is kind of silly. I always like to throw this in. Artwork collector's value stuff is one of my favorite things to cover. I have several videos on it, just kind of a plethora of ideas I have. Again, this is my personal opinion on this. It's a bunch of kind of like silliness all in one. But Jawas of Dark Demise, this only has two prints, I think a common, and then this original print rare from Chronic Guardian from Generation 1, classic nostalgia era. I just, I really love it. I don't know. I just like the eyes and the teeth and the purple and like the, the smoke. And I just think this is, it's not really a playable card. It's not to be like a meta deck. I'm not saying that this is like a crazy good card or anything. Um, it's cool how it's a water fiend. There's not a lot of that going around in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, but if you can get a first edition one of these, um, I think it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, mostly just because it has really badass artwork. Um, and Double Infinity looks like has the first one, which is, you know, going to run you about a dollar if you factor in the shipping. Unfortunately, it's a one of, and... You know, there's four other pages that you can check out. But really quick, I just wanted to show that. Kind of just put some ideas in mind. Moving on for the next card. If uh, China would stop ripping off the internet here. Okay, so Trap Tricks. Just Trap Tricks in general. I'm not going to go over a specific card. Um, This is actually kind of in a, a deck card I've been wanting to pick up. I've been really lazy about it. I need to really kind of get on it. But... I really like Trap Tricks. As a deck in general, it's pretty cool, but more specifically the artwork. Well, all of the Trap Tricks artwork is like phenomenal. I love the artwork so much. Um, it's kind of pricey right now for some of the stuff, but like like Reflasia, like all the monsters, um, don't worry about this gold stuff. This gold stuff is, is, is crap, but all the monsters really have just fantastic artwork. I really like them. Um, and I just like the, the deck in general. So if you guys can find some cheap, high-rarity uh, Trap Tricks stuff, um, I think that, that would be great for collector's value and artwork value. The last card I want to talk about is Gaga Ga Clerk. So this card took me by surprise. I actually didn't even know about this card. I was out um, on, on the town yesterday looking for some OCG resources, looking for some steals, doing some investments, and I actually found two copies of this first edition um, in English here in Japan, which I'm really surprised. Like, I really don't run across a lot of TCG cards here in Japan, but when I do, and they're really cheap, a lot of people don't really know what they're worth because they're in English, and uh, just a lot of Japanese shopkeepers uh, don't really care about English cards. They sell them really cheap, and I was really happy to pick up two copies here in Japan um, for pretty cheap. Um, so this isn't a really playable card. It's really not that great. Um, Gagaga Ga Ga is crap in general. I've never really liked the the deck in general. I, I always think it's been kind of crappy. Um, but with uh, Gagaga Ga Ga Girl, the original print Secret Rare First Edition is really going off. This is definitely like, I you can just take a look at the original print. Not the Super Rare, but the original Secret Rare print. And this has definitely become a collector's uh card in general because it's not a good card but it's just it, it's like dark magician and it's got really killer artwork and it's an old school secret rare and all that stuff um but this is following suit so the, the artwork is fantastic in this card again this is just another anime girl fanboy um collector's market value for this card um but if we look at the market really quick there's really not that again this is a solo print from cosmo blazer only super rare available and if we're looking at the market, there's only two listings left. Um, actually, hold on. Let me refresh this because it might have accidentally registered that I marked three or more because the last time I looked at this page, I'm pretty sure there was more than two listings. 
So you would think this card would be really cheap because it's really not a playable card. And it's pretty old and whatever have you. But if we're looking at it for the first editions, we don't run into some first editions until about the end of the first page. And look at the shipping on that. That, that is a, a painful shipping right there. So, um, yeah, so almost $6. Almost $6 for this card. There's only two pages left. And then it moves on, uh, increases after that. So this card is like almost gone. Um, don't worry about the unlimiteds. Even the unlimiteds are holding like almost three dollars, which is ridiculous. Like unlimiteds are completely useless for collectors. I I wouldn't worry about the unlimiteds by any means. Always go for the first edition. But um, yeah, Gaga Ga Clerk is. Um, I, I personally think that is moving into the collector's market value for artwork, and that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. This has been a showcasing by the White Mexican, and I'll see you in the next video.